Hey everyone, nice to see you again. In this movie, we'll talk about everything you need to know about AMC. The market as a whole, and most importantly, you fed your own energy. Powell is now fully bullish, and I have to say that I was wrong. Not a single sign of bearishness can be found. Not everything was very bullish, but we'll talk about it. The dot plot, in particular, wasn't so positive. For example, the estimate for 2025 dropped from 3.6% to 3.9%, which means that a rate cut is now priced in. You went from 2.9 to 3.1% over the long term. It's interesting that it went up for the first time in a long time. It was expected to be 2.5% in December, but now it's 2.6% for the long term. It was all go for the Fed, who raised their GDP predictions from 1.4 to 2.1. Also, they changed their prediction for unemployment from 4.1% to 4%. Their prediction for core PPI inflation by the end of the year went up from 2.4% to 2.6%. The Fed raised the neutral rate a little today, which is strange but kind of makes sense given the last two inflation reports and the fact that the economy is still growing even though these Fed funds rates are at about 52%. The thing that really got the markets going at least initially was the three rate cuts that are still priced in for 2024 that would essentially be like a cut in July, a cut in September, and maybe then a cut in November. And that's, that's all fine and dandy so short term this year nothing changed which was great because some people were you know pricing in or expecting there to be one rate cut, maybe two rate cuts in 2023 or 2024. And it stayed the same, which was really good. Uh, now again, your longer term rates, uh, those estimates went higher, which that is not great, but the markets didn't care about that at all, at least so far now. What's, what's actually notable to me is this column right here, the range, so you're looking at. The high, the high dot, and the low dot, like what is the range, so for the federal funds rate, um, back in the December projection, the low dot was 3.9%. By the end of this year, the high dot was 5.4%. So you know on the, the lower side, expecting like six rate cuts on the higher side, not expecting to move. Rates at all well now, the high side is 5.4%. So still not expecting to move rates, at least one Fed member on the low side, though that picked up big time from 3.9% to 4.4%. But that did not change the median federal funds rate expected. A rate by the end of this year, which I find interesting, so more Fed officials turned more bearish, but it did not affect the estimated three rate cuts in 2024, which I find kind of wild actually to, to see that big of a shift in the lowest due plot. The most douche Fed official just got a lot more bearish, but it didn't move things. So that's kind of the gist of the dot plot. And what happened there now, it was really the press conference that sent this thing home. Now, there's one thing in particular, one thing in particular that was very bullish to paraphrase. When Powell said that recent surprises in inflation have not changed the Federal Reserve's outlook. He also said, we always expected the road to be bumpy. What they want to see is if this recent rise in inflation turns out to be something more stable or long-lasting. At this point, they don't know if this is just a normal yearly change that will make inflation go back to where it was in the next few weeks or months, or if this is going to be a long-term trend. The fact that inflation is rising again is something they don't know, but they Powell said more than once that the latest inflation reports haven't made the Fed less sure that inflation is going to return to their 2% goal but they haven't made them more sure either. That is, the latest inflation numbers didn't really change the Fed's mind, they're still keeping an eye on it, but it didn't change it like L. Before the press conference, the Fed was just as positive or bearish as they are now, and the dot plot shows that you should still expect three rate cuts in 2024. As a result, the NASDAQ went up 1.2% and the SP by more than 1% after hours. During regular trade, the SP was up about 1%. After hours, it was up 0.13%. Of course, the stock that did the best was up 1.94%. It's likely that more rate cuts will be good for small cap stocks. You're up 0.17% after hours, and it's going up and down. You're really up about a quarter of a percent, but it will go back up to positive about a quarter of a percent. The NASDAQ is up about 0.3% after hours, which makes me think that AMC could make a lot of money in the future. In fact, it might be a very bold move forward. What's really interesting is that you can kind of see this on the one-minute candlestick chart. Until there is a reason to think otherwise, you have to be positive. Powell sounded like he just wants a reason to start lowering interest rates at the conference. Give him a reason to lower rates a lot. That's what I got from the meeting, I guess, very positive. Hit the lows with the market, and you went down with it. The markets then began to rise, and so did AMC stock. However, the stock did not manage to turn green which I find interesting. Powell changed his mind and now supports the bulls, which I think will be good for AMC. I don't know why AMC didn't rise more today, but their recent media upgrade and missed earnings may have had an effect. 
However, I expect an increase in AMC going forward. Let me tell you about some important levels to keep an eye on. I'm not sure if this will be a short squeeze or just a straight rise. At the moment, the 50-day moving average, which is lying at around $4.39 per share, is the most important level. It wouldn't surprise me if you broke through that tomorrow. That being said, if you do, it would not surprise me at all. The 100-day moving average is the next level to reach. If prices rise above that level, a short squeeze could start to happen. In any case, I think AMCC stock is going to have a rather parabolic rise here. Tell me what you think. Based on what people have said below, you can't really argue with what the Fed just said. More positive than I thought they would be, which surprised me. That wasn't what was said, there wasn't even a question about whether or not rates should be raised again or what would be needed to do that. I thought that the last two months of inflation would at least give the Fed a chance to say, hey, if inflation puts, I don't know why I'm up here. But hey, if inflation continues and it's not just a bump in the road, we will be ready to raise rates. Passionately hopeful. I think that the fact that Jerome Powell is fully on the side of the bulls must be good for AMC since rates are about to go down. I think this will help AMC refinance their debt and get rid of some of their other debt. Yes, it would be a big move for AMC's stock if it hit its 100-day moving average. From here, that would be a 34% move up. However, keep in mind that the markets are fully valued right now, which means that stocks are not on sale. Right now, stocks are worth more than their full value, so you could lose money. Keep in mind that unexpected things can still happen. Even if inflation goes up, the markets might not care. But the business is the most important thing to worry about right now. Powell has said that if the economy suddenly gets worse, the Fed will lower interest rates. Powell is looking for a reason to lower interest rates right now, but he doesn't have one quite yet. Since I'm being honest, I think Powell is waiting for something, like a banking crisis, to happen before he cuts rates. It would be crazy if banks started failing right now, and Powell would be cutting rates like crazy. We'll probably get a 50 basis point rate cut. That's how bullish Powell sounded today. So yeah, just remember that you are fully valued here on the markets. Would it surprise me to get a sell the news event for a day or two? Of course not. But do I think we're going into a correction now? No, I was wrong. There wasn't much talk about the longer term rate or the Fed actually raising it. The markets don't seem to care about fewer rate cuts in 2025 and 2026. Right now, it's all about 2024, and the three rate cuts we're still expecting. Powell made it clear that they're going to cut next, no matter what. Unless something crazy happens, you're going to be getting some cuts here very soon, and that's what the markets are loving. General agreement from Powell today. Now, let's talk a little more about AMC. If AMC starts to rise, I wouldn't be surprised if people become a little more bullish on it as well. There is one 4.07% short interest, which means that 157.5 million shares are currently in short positions. There are 2.49 days to cover 36.9 million shares that are currently sold short. There are 5 2.4 million shares out of loan at a cost of 1.09%, with a utilization rate of 64.83% and a short score of 69.6 out of 100. Next, when people look at AMC, if the stock starts to rally, they'll see it in a slightly different way. They'll see it as a way for shorts to potentially get squeezed, and I think that's a very powerful and important part of AMC that you shouldn't ignore. I do think that AMC is hundreds of percent sold short, just like most of you do. What's interesting is that we don't have any hedge fund institutions. Today's bullish sentiment is 68, up from 60 the day before. Message volume is 52 today, up from 49 the day before. So there are also a few more messages on stock Twitter. The participation ratio is 54, which is about the same as it has been over the last few days. The stock tracker data for AMC is likely to be similar to what we saw earlier. This moment, about 2,400 calls are in the money, while 42,000 calls are not. The money puts are at about 6,400 and the money puts are at about 16,000, so there isn't much of a change here. However, I think you'll start to see a bigger change there because I think the Russell is about to do really well if we really are going to get some rate cuts soon and the Fed isn't worried about the recent rise in inflation. At least that's what I would expect. The Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index and the other one are both set to come out tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. Philadelphia's economy was hurt by dollar amount spent on capital in Philadelphia Fed jobs in Fen Philadelphia Fed jobs. Philadelphia Fed prices paid a SP Global Composite PMI, a Global Manufacturing PMI, and Global Services PMI. So another a measure of inflation that will be coming out tomorrow. And then you do have Fed Bar that speaks at about noon. Uh, you do get the inflation rate year over year out of Japan that will also be coming out at 7.30 p.m. 
Tomorrow, nothing that's really going to outweigh the bullishness from PBBL today. But if you do see like services inflation fall, services PMI fall, then you probably get an even larger rally in the markets than you otherwise would. If you see those, those PMIs coming hot, so definitely things are uh, looking good as of right now. And my expectation is for a rally in AMC stock, but again, don't be surprised if we, if we do kind of consolidate here for a couple of days as we are bumping up uh, to major resistance levels like 520 on the SP, we're blowing past that uh, 440 on the triple QA. What blew past 205, any of your technical resistance levels just got blown through today. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Let me know your opinions as well down there. Hit the like button. Thanks for watching. But, and please tell your friends about the show. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.